بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبدأ وياكم أعزائي الطلبة بتكملة الجزء الثاني من المحاضرة السابقة والخاصة بالكلاسيفيكيشن of the oral and white and red region قدم حضراتكم من الدكتور ريحاب فيصل أحمد دكتور طب الفن قسم التشخيص الفني قسم طب الفن في كلية طب الأسنان جامعة الأنبار بسم الله we talk about the immunopathological disease Drug induced lichenoid reaction, lichenoid drug eruption appears similar to the lichen planus and may be severely colitis. It causes the drugs of their metoprolol and metoprolol metoprolol act as a haptin trigger a lichenoid reaction. Like penicillin, we call it and the sulfonamide antihypertensive drug like the methyl dopa, thiazide diuretic and the lichen malaria. All these drugs may cause the lichenoid reaction. This picture shows the drug-induced lichenoid reaction for the lateral border of the tongue. This is the lichenoid drug reaction associated with the penicillin. Lichenoid reaction of a grass grass host disease also similar to the clinical appearance of the oral lichen planus. The oral lesion has been the same clinical but more generalized, also the skin involved, puritic, macropapular, primary effect of palm and the salt. The other cavity may be the primary or even the only site of the chronic grass grass hair host disease. This picture shows the white lesion of the tongue and lip. Locus erythromatosis. It is autoimmune disease, involves immune complexes. There are many environmental factors that are associated with this disease, like sun exposure, drugs, chemical substances and hormones which all have been reported to aggravate this disease. Females are more affected than male. Etiology for this disease not known, but genetic factors appear to be important. There are two types of lopus erythromatosis. Type 1 chronic discoid lopus erythromatosis or localized type and number 2 systemic lopus erythromatosis or called disseminated type. Clinically, the oral lesion observed in the systemic lobus and discoid lobus erythromatosis are similar in their characteristic. There is no difference between oral lesion for two diseases. The most affected site are the gingiva, buccal mucosa, tongue, and palate. The typical clinical lesion comprises from the white citria with radiating orientation and this may sharply terminate toward the center of the lesions, which has a more erythromatous appearance. This picture shows the citrium of the lesion in the systemic lobus erythromatosis. This two picture show the oral lesion of the discoid lobus erythromatosis on the heart palate, and the left picture show the oral ulcer of the systemic lobus erythromatosis also in the palate. This coid lobus erythromatosis is restricted to the skin and on the face. This lesion may form butterfly like rash over the cheek and tongue known as a molar rash, which is the specific feature of the discoid lobus erythromatosis, while the systemic lobus erythromatosis characterized by skull rash, macro Papular rash, generalized lymph adenopathy, kidney, liver, lung, and the nervous system are also frequently involved by this disease. The discoid lobus erythromatosis show this picture the malar rash on the cheek of the patient. Systemic lobus erythromatosis diagnosis with four or more of 11 criteria present at any time. This criteria include the malar rash, discoid lesion, photosensitivity, presence of the oral ulcers, non erosive arthritis of the two joints or more, serocytes, renal disorder, neurological disorder. This four picture show the malar and the scar rash of this patient with the systemic lobus erythromatosis. Another criteria for SLE is the hematological disorder. Include the leukopenia, mean deficiency in the leukocyte, lymphopenia, deficiency in the lymphocyte, thrombocytopenia, and hemolytic anemia. Immunological disorder include the anti DNA 
عن انتي اس ام او انتي فوسفوليبت انتي باي انتي باديز direct immune histochemistry is conducted to repair the granular deposition of the immunoglobulin M, immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin A in addition to the C3 locus pantis is the anti nRNA or called anti-nuclear ribonuclear protein. Laboratory finding. We can see in the laboratory finding in patient with the system globus that anti-nuclear antibody are frequently found in patient with the SLE and can be used to indicate a systemic involvement but in patient with another rheumatological disease like the Jokin syndrome and rheumatoid arthritis may be also positive. Number two, moderate to high titer of the anti-DNA and anti-Smith antibody are almost pathognomic of the SLE. So the presence of the anti-DNA and anti-Smith antibody it is the pathognomic for the SLE and differentiated from the other rheumatological disease. Number three, antibodies associated with the Jogin syndrome, SLE, like the anti ssa -RO and the anti ss -B -LA. Management for the patient with the locus erythromatis for the oral lesion by use the topical steroid to leave the oral system, such as the clopidazole, propionate gel, 0.25% Beta methazone dipropionate of 0.05%. And number two, we can use the immune suppressive drug to treat the lobus erythromatosis. Number four of the from the classification of the white and red lesion include the allergic reaction. What means by the allergic reaction? We talk about the liquinoid contact reaction. It's a type of the hypersensitivity, delay hypersensitivity type to constituent derived from the dental material. Mercury is usually considered the primary etiological factor. Other amalgam constituent may indicate of the liquinoid contact reaction. Clinically, how it appears? It appears as the same reaction of the oral like planus, non-symptomatic, but when erythromatous or ulcerative, the patient may have discomfort from a spicy and warm food constituent. Leukinoid reactions in contact with composite filling have been observed on the buccal side of both the upper and lower lips. Leukinoid contact reaction to the dental amalgam will show the white and erythromatous region in this picture. The most clinical differences between an oral lichen planus and the leukinoid contact reaction is the extension of the lesion. In the oral lichen planus, the lesion is more extension than the liquinoid reaction. The liquinoid contact reaction are compared to the side that are in contact with the dental material like the amalgam or laticule such as the buccal mucosa and the border of the tongue that adjacent to the filling. Management. We can manage this by replacement of the dental materials in third contact with the liquinoid contact reaction. Reactions to the dental phrases and the global accident Delay hypersensitive reaction to the toothpaste and mouthwash have been reported, but these reactions are very rare. Clinically, it appears as red edematous gingiva, which may include both ulceration and white lesion. Number five from the classification of the white and red lesion is the toxic reaction. This means reaction to the smokeless tobacco. Smokeless tobacco can be divided into three different rules chewing tobacco, moist snap, and dry snap. The lesion may be noted as wrinkles at the site of the application or may display a white and lateral lesion which sometimes contain ulceration. Smoker spirit is clinically the most common effect of the smoking are dark brown pigmentation of the oral mucosa. This is called smoker's melanosis. And the white lethal lesion of the pellet usually referred to as nicotinic stomatitis or smoker's pellet. As part of this lesion, red dot can be observed representing offices of the accessory cerebral gland which can be enlarged. These two pictures show the smoker's pellet and the melanosis. The picture on the right side, we can see the red dot of the office of the 
Celebrate Grand Antecedent and the second picture show the melanosis or pigmented melanosis due to the uh, smoking effect. You can see on the lower gingiva. This picture also shows the office of the salivary gland that appears as a red dot on the palate. Reaction to the trauma. There are many types of reaction, like the mechanical. We can talk about the line alpha. What is meant by line alpha? This occurs due to chronic chewing or sucking of the cheek. Reduce a thin band on the buccal mucosa bilaterally at the level of the occlusal gland. Or may be trauma due to tooth brushing. This leads to the ulceration on the gingiva. Also, it is a type of the mechanical trauma. Fractional hyperkeratosis. It appears as a white lesion without any red element and observed in area of the oral mucosa. Subject to increase the fraction caused by the food intake. Most show in the edentulous alveolar ridge or any part of the oral mucosa exposed to the trauma. It is not symptomatic for the patient. These two pictures show the refractional keratosis that result from the mastication force of the food. You can see the white color on the ridge of the mandible. Reactions to the trauma. These two pictures show the two types of the fractional keratosis. The right picture show the fractional keratosis in the buccal mucosa in the bruxism patient. While the second picture, we can see the fractional keratosis fighting of second trauma on the buccal mucosa of the cheek. Number six, reaction to the trauma, we take about the chemical. Chemical include the aspirin pen in the buccal mucosa sulcus adjacent to the painful tooth lead to the white sloping epithelium. Number two, the unique stomatitis, extensive pseudomembranous white lesion in patient with renal failure due to increased blood urea. Nitrogen level above 50 mg per deciliter. Thermal or the three types of the chemical smokers of the cigars, cigarettes and pipes. This two pictures show the sloughing of the oral mucosa due to the burning sensation of the aspirin. This picture show the burning or the sloughing of the oral epithelium due to the use of the Local anesthesia, spray local anesthesia that lead to the stopping of the epithelium. So we can talk about the other red and white lesion and the finally classification of the oral white and red lesion. Penile migratory glossitis or geographic tongue lesion affected the tourism and the margin of the tongue. The typical clinical presentation comprises a white, yellow, or gray, slightly elevated peripheral zone, reflecting atrophy of the filiform papillae, non symptomatic pathology genetic factors. This picture shows the trophic tongue. There is no treatment for this patient, only reassurance for the patient. But topical anesthesia can be used if there is any symptom or burning in this tongue, can be filled by the patient. Lycodema, the etiology unknown. Clinically, is a wide alteration of the oral mucosa. The condition is found bilaterally in the buccal mucosa and sometimes at the borders of the tongue. Diagnosis, we can do genetic stretching, result in a temporary disappearance of the white color. By this way, can differentiate from the other keratosis like leucopathia. So, when there is two similar lesions like leukoplakia and leukodema can be differentiated by gentle stretching. This picture shows the leukodema. We can do gentle stretching for the cheek, 
you can see the disappear of the white color. After remove this section, the color is returned to the white color. What is spongy nimbus? At autosomal dominant disorder. Clinically, it is a white region with an elevated and irregular surface. The most effective sites are the buccal mucosa, but the lesion may also be in other area of the oral cavity covered by keratinized epithelium. Management, no treatment, only reassurance for the patient. This picture shows the white sponge nimbus. Also, its white color present on the buccal mucosa, diffused on the old buccal mucosa. Hairy tongue. The etiology of the hairy tongue is unknown in most cases. Clinically, it is characterized by an impaired stomatic or the filiform family. So, hairy like clinical appearance. For this appearance, we can call the hairy tongue. The elongated papillae dent may be exceeded of 3 mm or may be little from the 3 mm. The lesion is commonly found in the posterior one third of the tongue, but may involve the entire mechanism of the tongue. Hairy tongue colors from white to black depending on food constituent and the composition of the oral microflora. There are many predisposing factors related to this disorder. Number one, neglect oral hygiene. When the patient is neglect, the oral cavity may be lead to the hairy tongue. A shift in the microflora due to both spectrum of the antibiotic take by the patient, this lead to the shift in the microflora. Antibiotic and immune suppressive drug also lead to the hairy tongue. Number four, oral candidiasis. Number five, excessive alcohol consumption. Number six, therapeutic radiation. Number seven, smoking habit which considered the most common for the hairy tongue. How can diagnosis the hairy tongue? Can be diagnosed from the clinical appearance from the patient, in addition to the history from the patient. Now, how can management? Number one, reduction or elimination of predisposing factor and remove of the elongated filiform papillae. Number two, the patient should be instructed on how to use devices developed to scrub the tongue. The scrubbing to the tongue can be done by the tongue brush used and instruct the patient to use this tongue brush for removal of the elongated papillae in addition to the mouthwash to obtain normal oral cavity with any 8% of the hairy tongue. Thank you very much. For the listening for me. As a Taliban, Munhi Ajus Athani, Minal Muhammara, Al Khasa, Bil White and Al Red Region, Classification of the Oral Mucosa, Fatarik Mashallah, Fil Muhammara Athania, Dumtum Fi Amalahua, Shukal Hussein Istima, Wasalamu Alaikum, Rahmatullahi, Wabarakatu.